dropping off on the homestead. Today I'll give you a quick montage video of the garden, we'll cover the orchard, and we'll see what's up with the honeybees. So I came down to the beehive about a week ago to check on them, and I noticed that the whole hive had been infested with ants. I'll show you how I solved that problem. So because I was feeding the bees sugar water, uh, some of it was dripping down below the hive and it was uh, collecting or attracting a lot of ants and they had crawled up the legs and were getting into the hive and, and competing with the bees. So I wish I could take credit for this uh, idea, but it was so simple uh, and easy to do. One of my subscribers, uh, I don't remember who it was, but uh, if you're watching this video, uh, be sure and comment and come and receive your accolades because it's a brilliant idea, uh, was simply smearing some axle grease, some waterproof grease around the four legs. Uh, the ants uh, battled with this for several days and then finally gave up and they're all gone. And as you can see, no more ants in the hive. So here is a, you can see some comb. So our two dogs, Bristol and Lucy, have become really effective uh, mole diggers. Uh, they work all day digging these guys out of the ground and, and have uh, got a whole bunch of them. Lucy, did you get a mole? Did you get it? So as most of you guys know, we've used the, uh, are using the Back to Eden gardening method using wood chips. But in here in the orchard, this is one of our little, uh, little trees, our little grafted trees. Uh, we use pine needles for mulch, a good six inches of it. But uh, I water these things rarely and it's been really hot. But look at this soil. It's uh, not muddy but just soft and moist and black and rich and non-compacted. Just wonderful and the uh, apple trees are just thriving fantastically. But the pine needles, or the fir needles, um, make a great mulch. So here's one of our little grafted apple trees uh, and you can see it's doing really well. Nice uh, leaves. It's got a little bit of curl in it and from what I understand that's probably from the shock of transplanting. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But here you can see the actual graft. Below where my thumb is is the rootstock, and then here is the scion that we started with, and then the graft scabbing over. But everything looks really good on all of them. So as you know, we planted our orchard this year, and this is our very first apple. So welcome back. Today we're in the homestead orchard, and we're going to be staking out the fruit trees. They're starting to lean a little bit, so we need to kind of persuade them to uh, straighten up, and we'll get them sorted out right now. So we got this old fence post driven in the ground at kind of an angle. We're going to be wanting to pull the, pull the tree back this way. It's starting to grow at kind of a crooked angle. And I've been using this uh, real soft kind of a nylon webbing that they use for pulling conduit or a wire inside a conduit. It's really strong and it's, it's probably about the cheapest stuff you can get like this. And the fact that it's so wide and so soft uh, makes it seem really good for the fruit tree. So. We'll uh, use a section of this. So I found that work, what works pretty good is just to make a, a loop here. My loop here, I can just kind of feed this through here. Now I get a, I call a mechanical advantage. Carefully some tension on that tree. Make a loop here. It'll be easy to untie. And then we, by pulling this tail we can just take this loose and then put more tension on it or less tension and kind of keep an eye on it. So here's how the orchard's laid out. Four apple trees down there. There's three rows. Four there. Or th three there and then three there. A total of ten I believe we have. And then those are being fed, you can see, by the irrigation lines. And these over here are all the little ones that we grafted. So we're going to go there. We have to do just a little bit of pruning on them. So this is the one of the little ones we grafted off the rootstock. And this is a John of Gold on an M7 rootstock. And you can see right here the graft where that rubber tape is. That's starting to, uh, that graft is set in really good there and it's starting to, the, the rubber's starting to come off. But what we have is we have these little branches 
growing below the graft on the rootstock. We don't want those. Those are not going to uh, produce fruit and are just taking away from the, the resources of the, of the tree. So you guys probably remember the wire panels that we use for the black raspberry trellises. Well, I had a whole bunch of them laying around the homestead, and I used these uh, to make really great tomato cages. If you cut them in half right down the middle and bend them together, uh, I'll show you how it uh, kind of worked out. So here's a row of our tomato plants, and I simply uh, took those cages, as I said, cut them in half, bend them around, and uh, either zip tie them together or use baling wire, whatever you had. On the bottom side, I cut this upper ring off and left these long spikes so you could stick it down and, and it secures in the ground really nice. Heirloom organic tomatoes. I've got some nice heirloom organic cucumbers. Onions are doing well. The little pepper plants are coming along. The potatoes sure are going off. They really like it up here. Fresh organic garlic is just about ready for harvest. And some beautiful organic strawberries. Organic squash is coming on. Corn. Blueberries. Black raspberries. Sunflowers. And red raspberries. Hmm. So that's about it for the homestead tour. Just a couple updates. Uh, we had a really great time on the Call In Talk radio show I hosted last night. Uh, it was um, uh, the first time we ever did it, and uh, just uh, the three hours just flew by. I had a lot of fun with that. Thanks all of you guys for calling in, and a lot of people I wasn't able to get to. The caller board, uh, the wait times were over 30 minutes, and we just I just couldn't get them, and I to all of them in time. So we'll uh, work on being a little bit more efficient in the future. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. I'd like to hear some feedback. And those of you who did listen to the show or participate on it or in it, um, uh, I could use some constructive criticism also. The equipment that I was using was very, very poor, and I'm uh, looking to upgrade that so it'll improve the audio content uh, significantly uh, very soon, as soon as I can get something, get my hands on something. Uh, the other thing is uh, we had a film crew come out uh, from um, a documentary film crew. Uh, they're producing a fil film called Beyond Off Grid, and they're traveling across the country and they're featuring families uh, that are, have moved out of the city and, and getting into more of a country homesteading lifestyle. Uh, I'm asked to do these things all the time, and I always turn producers down. Um, I, I call them and talk to them, and they just are not... Uh, they're, what, the, what they, how they would portray us is not, um, uh, just not real. And this particular uh, uh, film crew or producer uh, was very different. He's coming from a Christian perspective, and uh, we were on the same mind with a lot of things. So uh, we allowed them to come on up, and they brought their crew and spent the day with us last week. And we had a good time, and I'm looking forward to that. So I'll put a link down to their uh, promo uh, website, and they're doing a bit of a fundraiser, a uh, Kickstarter type of thing. So. Uh, uh, if you feel uh, moved to do that, uh, go ahead and you can help them out. Uh, but that film should be coming out uh, probably around Christmas time, so I'll, I'll let you know more about that when it, as the time approaches. So that's all I've got for you today, and thanks for watching, and thanks for all of you who participated in the radio show. We'll see you on the next video. Daddy home, did he go?